Um, why not push for OTC QB? There was a little confusion in in regards to whether that had to do with QIND or ILIS or ERT. Um, you know, people are confused. So maybe you could clarify um, the QB status and whether or not ILIS is going to pursue OTC QB status. Yeah, I think firstly, what's the takeout from our recent videos? The takeout for me is that, and hopefully, you know, the majority would have seen this, that we will first uplist QIND to a big board and that we will hold off on uplisting ILIS to a big board until the opportune time. So just to be clear, we never specifically stated that we would uplist ILIS itself in the short term to a big board. We very clearly spoke about a subsidiary uplist. So ERT in, is the main, you know, example we spoke about and we spoke about that since our first annual shareholder meeting so in that regard we were primarily focused on the uplist of our ERT subsidiary so I think you know what actually let me just show you quickly I've got a presentation from our annual shareholders meeting let me just bring that up on the screen I've got four screens so let me just make sure I select the right one you can see it there right Yes. The recap. All right. So this slide, I'm, I'm not going to maximize it. So apologies. I'll just keep it like I keep it simple with every, all the documents I have open. But this slide we shared, just recapping on what was shared at our first annual shareholders meeting, where we very clearly spoke about the different subsidiaries we were planning in the business. We had the emergency response subsidiary. We had the integrated systems subsidiary renewables and the autonomous tech at that time. So that's that was our plan at the beginning of 2022, corresponding to our 2021 year, right? And we spoke about Eyeless remaining the parent company and having a series of spin-offs being our plan, uh, with us having a 50 to 80 percent or a majority control of each of each subsidiary. Anyway, this is the picture we painted originally, right? And we continued with that focus. Certainly, you know, myself being involved in, in the writing of the PRs and things like that, I know for sure that we always spoke about uplisting or we spoke about a subsidiary uplist. I think that's really the terminology that we that we used and, and tried to use continuously. Then we shaped that and developed it a bit further for 2023 as follows, right? So we had the emergency response subsidiary, industrial renewables and defense. So we obviously added a bit more meat on the bones uh, on the right side here. What we have said is that we are going to move forward with this one first, right? We're not per se saying that there will be an S SPV. Uh, for, there doesn't have to be an SPV for the other three, but certainly there is one in the form of QI and D, right? So this is the picture we've painted. So we're saying this one, second from left would be number one that we are working on at the moment. Then we would look at ERT as the second. However, it's possible that any one of these could be ready sooner. That's that's just the reality of it. Now we know that investment banks are very, very interested in ERT for, for obvious reasons, you know, wildfires, the technology, all of that. And it's up to us to really ready this ERT business. Anyway, I don't want to languish on this because I've now digressed from uh, you know from the points around around the QB, but I just wanted to clarify for people what we meant. Um, let me just stop the share quick. All right, you back to back to normal. Yep. Yep. So, so awesome. I just wanted to clarify that. Hopefully, that just gives a little bit of a, a better a better picture. And uh, we also did not say that we would not look at uplisting ILIS to the OTC QB in the meantime. So this is one of the issues with timelines, right? If we don't specifically say something, people assume it's not happening. But if we say something, then people say it's a timeline and we should only tell them when it's done. So, you know, it, it's a bit of a difficult kind of almost a lose-lose situation for us. And we do our best to manage it. And of course, I understand why people want things done a certain way. I'm, I'm not downplaying the importance of that at all, right? We always try to take the feelings and the thoughts and the opinions of shareholders into account, right? That's why you and I have these calls and, and things like that too. So look, we run the business, we do what we do and it continues to grow and things will happen along the way. And one of those things may be an uplist of ILIS to the OTC QB in pretty much, you know, the short term, you know, we certainly didn't say that we wouldn't. 
Uh, right now, we've got real priorities and we're focused on those, uh, but an eyeless uplist to the HCQB certainly can't be ruled out. And we're just really attending to things in order of priority. So just bear in mind, and I don't think people always see this right, we have finite bandwidth as a team. So, you know, people who don't have our perspective will say, Isla should just do this or they should do that. And in some cases, that's correct. And we are doing those things or will do those things. But in other cases, there's more important business priorities that are being attended to, you know, right here and right now. So who is also to say that it doesn't mean that there's exciting things or exciting announcements right around the corner. I think people have incorrectly assumed from these recent videos that nothing exciting will happen for ILIS until QI and D up lists or after that. And we didn't say that, uh, you know, it's also, you know, again, it's shareholders who told us to skip the timelines and give the news on completion. So you can't really have it both ways. <laughs> you know, we, we could announce something next week or the week after that's just the way it goes. And, I think, Eric, look, more than any other company on the OTC, we've openly displayed our vision uh, and our plans through in-person annual shareholder meetings, through multiple videos, in letters, in PRs, and maybe to our detriment even. You know, we've continued to remain tr transparent regardless. And, you know, we've confirmed our progress even through through audited financial results, becoming SEC reporting, you know, through adding real businesses. I believe we've achieved unmatched growth. And, I get it. You know, people are undoubtedly angry. They're frustrated. They're disappointed mostly because of the share price, as are we, by the way. Uh, uh, you know, maybe it doesn't always come across. Um, you know, after all, we, you know, I think we've built something pretty awesome. Uh, and uh, and like many shareholders, we've also lost quite a lot along the way. I think the point is that regardless of all the emotions, the company still continues from strength to strength, and it will still deliver the plans we have for it. And that's mostly, I think, because we've stayed the course and not been reactive at, at every turn, right? So anyway, apologies for the long-winded answer, Eric, but hopefully that gives you just more no. of a perspective to the whole picture. The point is an uplist to ITC to ITCQB was never ruled out. And in addition, there's also other positive things that are on the go too. So okay. I shouldn't really drift along towards a QI and the uplist with nothing else happening along the way, if you know what I mean. Absolutely. I think I also want to add, if I can just add something about the the uplist of the whole of ILIS itself, I think some of the reason reasoning behind Nick's video in particular around the timing of an ILIS uplist to a big board, as he mentioned it, is because we have actually had the option of taking the whole of ILIS to a big board, uh, not in a way that I think anyone would assume. I, I don't think anyone would assume, uh, be able to assume how, uh, or that, that option that we have. And we still have that option. We could execute it relatively quickly if we wanted to. Uh, and I'm not talking about a reverse split. I'm not talking about a reverse merger. I'm not talking about a SPAC or the ways that everyone speculates. The point is we've had that option and we decided it wasn't the right move for right now because of the market conditions and really just what would denote our success on a big board regardless of how we get there, right? So Nick was very much referring to our decision not to fulfill the ILIS route for now and to focus on the QI and D uplist while ILIS continues to do its thing, which of course may include QB in the meantime.